Russia is a villain, that Putin is a war criminal who's breaking all the rules. So we would expect uh, India to be with us. Well, I would prefer India to be uh, more, uh, more positive uh, in support of the Western world because we see who is evil here and who attacked without any precedent a peaceful nation. So I think that all democratic nations should now very strongly support Ukraine and stop wavering uh, about Russia because it is absolutely clear that Russia is a villain, that Putin is a war criminal who's breaking all the rules. So we would expect uh, India to be with us uh, and to support us strongly in our stance against dictatorship and against people who are war criminals. Unfortunately, you know, it's a bitter, say, a bit, bitter thing to say, but we were right all along. I remember that when I was a member of the European Parliament, when I was working in the European Parliament a long time ago, we were saying that, you know, Europe needs to be more assertive towards Putin, that we need to be energetically independent, that we shouldn't do business with Russia because it will soon end in a calamity. Uh, many people were saying that we were obsessed about Russia, but history proved us right. There are three types of challenges. I mean, first of all, we need to help them and accommodate them. And mostly, most of the people who are coming at the beginning were taken care of by their families and friends. Now they need accommodation and basic help. Second uh, type of problems is, of course, all the administrative burdens, because the government is shifting all the administrative duties on us, which means that we have to register them, that also we will be um, responsible for distributing uh, money and financial aid offered by the government. And of course then there are problems uh, of a long-term nature because mm -hmm. Ukrainians were granted a, citizen very, uh, a <coughs> status very similar to our citizens. So they have access to free education, to free health care and so on. And again, we need to provide it. We are responsible for, for schools. So, Well, that's why if there is a second way if we need a system offered by the European Union and by the United Nations. We cannot do it alone. I mean, most of what has been done has been based on the civil society, on non-governmental organizations, on thousands of volunteers, on the city services. We are at capacity. We cannot accept 100,000 more refugees. That's why we need a relocation system in Europe and in the world, and we need to share the burden, all of us. First of all, you know, the Polish government has to ask European and international institutions for help. I hope that it will happen soon, and then we will have a system in place where the United Nations and the European Union will start helping us out in a way which is much more synchronized and prepared, because for now a lot is based on improvisation. But yes, for some people also the question of uh, cultural and linguistical affinity is important, uh, but the uh, support for the Ukrainian cause and the welcoming uh, instinct of the Polish society has been overwhelming this time. We want Ukraine to be a member of uh, the European Union as quickly as possible. The words of the American president are very important, especially about defending every inch of NATO territory. This gives us assurance and we can, uh, we can feel safe and simply do our job when it comes to supporting Ukraine. So I hope that we will hear more words of support. And of course, you know, also the uh, United States of America uh, is ready to help us with refugees and I hope with the humanitarian crisis that, uh, that we witness uh, in Poland. That's, that's, that's the message we want to hear. Yeah.